first and only podcast dedicated to the locked box. And no, I did not plagiarize that. I'm Admiral Murphy, and these are my co-hosts. Maverick, Fleet Leader, Jupiter Force. Uh, I'm Kershey. Welcome to Oxbox Files. I'm Amaro. Welcome. And I'm Ethior. Mystic One, Lifetime Crewman. And basically, all of us has come together because we love the lockbox a lot. So that's what we're here for. And this entire podcast is going to be dedicated to all aspects of the lockbox. Because guess what? We got a new lockbox. It is the Tao Shi'ar lockbox. So we'll be discussing what's all in that. And heck, everybody right now is gathering keys because we're going to open up lockboxes live to see if we get any ships and stuff like that. Does anybody think they're going to get the ship? Anybody? Nope. Yep. I'll get it on the first one. I probably won't get it. Knowing who I am, I won't get a damn thing. Have but you question, gotten a ship before? Have I gotten a sh any ship out of a lockbox yeah, any, before? Has anybody gotten a ship out of a lockbox before? Never. Uh, <laughs> um, I got a Toughly Freighter. And I ended counts. up with a... Oh, wait, no, was that Doff? No. I ended up with a Mirror Universe ship. Yeah, oh, wait, I, no, I, I think that, that was a Doff pack thing, though. Yeah, that, that was the Doff pack. Because yeah. it was after the Jim Hadar one shortly after, like, the, 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 the one in the Doff pack. Yeah, I got yeah. a temp temporal dis um, science vessel on my fifth or sixth key. Oh, you know what? Device. I do have a. You know what? I do have a temporal science vessel. I don't have the Moby. The Moby. That's right. That was a. That was a Loby thing. Ah. Uh, I had to buy my wells off the exchange. Anyway, we'll see if any of us get lucky when we open up block boxes, and then I'll be doing tips with Mystic to remind you guys the easy steps for remembering everything you can do with lockboxes. Then we'll have Alt and Baryon later to school you and how you can make profit off of lockboxes and such. Later on, then WeeWee's going to do some ship math and tell you if any of the ships in lockbox are actually worth trying to get, whether you're buying off the exchange or shooting for it in the lockbox. And then we've got some feedback, some people sending some comments on lockboxes and questions, because tons of people have questions about lockboxes. You know it, we know it. So, hey, why don't we discuss the Tao Shiar lockbox, then? All right, let's do it. Hey, wait a minute, though. Stop that one. Oh, go ahead. Um, do we do an episode for every lockbox? Or are we, yes. going, are we going retroactive, eventually? Uh, I, basically, I, the plan is, every new lockbox, we definitely have to have an episode. I don't see it as being, like, a weekly show, but if we got something to talk about lockboxes, I can see us have an episode then. Okay. About every three months. We might have Quarterly. more episodes than on screen. Quarterly. Yes, yep, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. So in today's episode, we're talking about, obviously, the Talshar lockbox. Uh, most of you know me from Stoked Radio or Jupiter Station or wherever you've known me on the net. I, I saw you on that one show. Uh, what was that? People's Court, right? I think it was an episode of People's Court. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 mustache, the mustache got me out of a lot That guy. Oh, yeah, right. Also, okay. there was a campaign that I was a part of uh, the about, uh, you know, it was a stash tax credit. It was with H&R Block. I'm sure if you look it up, you'll see what it's about. Anyway. Didn't that break into, like, riots or something? I can't remember. So I think that's where I recognize it. Today, right. we're, today we're talking about the Talshare Lockbox, because that's the new hot topic. We all knew there was a lockbox coming, okay? We all knew that they were going to retire them, especially when they started doing master key sales, and all of a sudden they were repumping up and reintroducing all the other lockboxes for a short amount of time. By the time you hear this, or by the time you see this, uh, you know, depending on Friday where you pick this up, Friday-ish, Saturday-ish, you know, after my show or whatnot, you know, the Master Key sale may still be in progress. If not, you know, everybody knows where to get them, either, you know, EC's on the exchange or Zen Store, so we're not going to, you know, talk about how to get this stuff. It's easy. Kill stuff, get the key, you know, buy the keys, shoot stuff, get the boxes, then open them up. So... This lockbox has all kinds of stuff that they've thrown in it, specifically for, uh, they say, the Tal Shiar. I see it as they couldn't quite get the Narada from the J.J. verse. <coughs> Bad movie. Um, and Whoa. so they just, uh, you know, they threw something together to make it look like it. And they threw something together. They threw a weapon in there, you know, to make it look like it's from there. But, you know, it isn't. But we all it, know it, where it's it came an from. obvious ripoff of the yeah, Narada. We, we, I mean, we, we know where it came from. Yeah, the first picture you see when you go onto their site is of a ship that you go, oh, it's the Narada. It just has less arms coming out of it. But you honestly, know. I like the look of this ship. How do you guys feel about it? 
I'd have to see it all, you know, in game, you know, full 3D, you know, get all the way around it. The pictures don't, I'm pretty sure, aren't going to do it justice. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the one picture they have posted on the Perfect World website for the adapted battle cruiser. To me, it looks like one of those big green June bug beetles that fly around and get in your face that yep, you just want to smash. So, I don't know. It, they said it's supposed to be modeled after, like, a super Didaridix, but we'll, we'll see. But am I excited about this lockbox? Well, you know, how can you not be excited about any particular lockbox? Just because I personally, using my disclaimer, do not like lockboxes, hate the idea of having a scratch the lottery ticket and hope to get something mentality behind this stuff, even if they give you four lobby crystals for it. It's just one of those things where it's like, meh, okay. But is there neat stuff in here? Well, of course there's neat stuff in here. You know, a couple different kinds of ships, you know, you can get credit bonuses, fleet bonuses, you know, all the stuff that used to be around. Fleet mark bonuses, the, you know, mining claims, blah, 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 blah. You know, now they're throwing in, you can get liberated, you know, Borg Romulan science officers. Tons of crap. Just yeah. tons and tons and tons of stuff. Yeah, you let's know. go through the ships first of all. What, what ships can we see in here? I've already seen, let's see, we got the Tal Shiar Adapted Destroyer. And you know what? I've seen a lot of people getting that since we, right now, Legacy Romulus is up. We don't know how about long the minutes. service will be up. Yeah, how many of you, you guys have been seeing it? Tons of flashing by for this ship, I've at least noticed, for the Adapted Destroyer. Off. How do you, I don't even know how to do that. Do you, do you know how to, how do you do that? I don't remember. It was set, it was a setting a while, turning off administrative messages or, or something like that. I, it was right. in the settings where you turn I remember off there's an old settings. way to do it, but then they changed something that it reset. Yeah, I, you know, I'd like, I'd like, I want to see how many people are getting something I'm not getting. That adds yeah. to me. It doesn't make me want to go out and buy it. It makes me want to go find the guy who got it and punch him in the face. And apparently one of the members who was joining us today just found out he's stuck in a login queue. Uh, <laughs> yep. most, like, most likely, if you're listening to this this weekend, you are sitting in a queue wondering, what am I missing? What's out there? Well, we're going to try to tell you what's out there. But I'm in a queue for our star base. That's the... <laughs> you got to do a queue the, for the, the star point. Base. Wow. Yep. Probably is the star base server. The line starts out there. Yep. Yeah, so I'm seeing the picture here <laughs> where it's the Tal Shiar Adapted Destroyer, and that definitely has, like, the, the missile rocket things from the movie. You can obviously—I I didn't even read this yet for this part, but just seeing the picture, that's obviously the rockets from the movie that the Narada was shooting off. And that's yeah. whatever console they were throwing onto that ship. Man, I still think they look like the Jericho missile from Iron Man 1. Oh, or the, oh, yeah, the good shrapnel comparison. torpedo. Good comparison. I like it. The Jericho missile. It, they're giving me paper cuts just looking at them. Yeah, I'm looking at them. It looks like they're going to do the same thing that they did in the movie where you fire them off and then they split into all the, the shrapnel or whatever and it yep, spreads yep. across the enemy ship. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see that. I thought it was kind of cool in the movie. Using Torpedo Spread 3 with one of them. That would be Here we go. And then we've got the Taushiar Adapted Battle Cruiser. Now this one's going to be for the Lobby store, so right. you won't be able to get out of the lockbox and only on the store. But, but if you have built up Lobby over a long period of time, you can go pick this up now. Uh, let me yep. see how many I got. I got. Let's see. Uh, two. How I think that'll be it? enough. Okay, about four hundred. Can anybody go into the the store and check? Because that's I haven't been able to check the store yet. It, uh, it'll be eight hundred. Like use your Lobby. Click Special right requisition use. pack. I got it here. Special requisition pack. Tal Shiar Adapted Battle Cruiser. 800 Lobi. Not bad. Yep. Yep. I've got two, so I'm almost there. I got like 42, so unless I hit like a couple of lottery wins here. Now, I'm going to be using my Ferengi. Maybe I can get some luck with his lobes. And the Liberated Borg Romulan Science Officer is also available on the Lobi store for a cool 300 Lobi. Nice. Oh, that's, 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 only that's expensive. All right. It looks I, like they I do have. It looks like they're uh, they're doing stuff with the temporal and dominion lock boxes. They've got a couple of new other Romulan ships. I guess that are supposed to be the equivalent there. And I'm here. It looks like they're just straight up reskins of the, the Roman ships that are the other ships. Here. Yep. The non-combat pack Kalid Companion is also on the lobby for thirty lobby. Ooh. I think that's at the bottom here, so we'll get to more information on that in a second. But then, of course, they've got the Mirror Hapox, whatever advanced word word. I cannot speak Romulan. It's kind of like Cleon. Don't even get me started on Cleon. 
And it's got the ionized gas sensor console. Does anybody know anything about that one? I've been hearing a little uh, about it. Yes, I, know I do. The, uh, Go ahead. I know that. Is this like the old ionized gas sensor? Console? I guess. Yeah, it no, is. What, what can you tell us? It works yeah. like the uh, butt sniffing torpedo from st the undiscovered country. You fire it, it seeks out a cloaked target, cripples its engines, and disables its cloak. And yeah. it works like a high yield torpedo. Is this the console that's in the lot box or the device that is on the other ship? Nope. Like it's it's a, ship here. That's a console nope. that's in the lock box. It's, right. a, it's a console pack. It's not attached to the mirror. Oh, it isn't? At okay. all. No, By they here, just it looks like lumped it, it together on the, the same uh, uh, header text. Uh, two, other, right. two other items I also located in the Lobby store that are new. Something called a psionic dampener for 5 Lobby, plus 5 Ooh. energy damage resistance for an hour, plus 25 psionic resistance for an hour, and a tachyon grenade. Negative 60.6 .6 target shields. 36.7 uh, kinetic damage with 50% shield penetration. Damage reduces from the epicenter, destroys force fields, disables and holds electronic foes for 15 seconds. Sounds like an anti-Borg weapon. Yeah, anti-cover yep. shield, too. The Tachyon grenade is an anti-Ilachi weapon. Aha. Yep. So, and then, of course, we've got everybody's favorite, because you get so much of it in the lockbox, 25,000 fleet credit pool bonus, the 5,001 CXP bonuses, 100 fleet mark bonus, and dilithium mining claim package. I've never got one of these mining claim packages. Neither do I. I have got one. five of them. But I according have... to our uh, fleet mate hunter, buy them, get them any way you can, and go to the mining station. So I mean, something definitely worth doing. Yeah, I've yes. got like six of them. I They're have, buying on pickup. I have 66 of them. Jesus. Yeah. And I have done that many games so many times. I am guaranteed 5,000 raw dilithium per run, per day. Yep. So then yep. it looks like we got some nanite disruptors that will be in the lockbox. Uh, duty officers, of course, which we're probably going to see a lot of when we go to open up lockboxes here in a second. Uh... The Liberated Borg Re Romulan Science Officer. Yep. About the nanite disruptors, they're not your typical disruptor. They no longer give a disruptor burn residue effect on you. Instead, you see a nanite cloud around you which debuffs your damage resistance and makes your shields take much more damage than normal. So do you think it's better than the uh, other disruptors? What do, you, what do you find you like them more? I like the fact that it makes your shields weaker so that you can knock them down faster and once those shields are down and their damage resistance from armor is already debuffed you can just rip their heads off with it well don't forget about the consoles where um the fed ionized gas is being given to clans yep. in the plasmonic leech which is a kdf weapon is get be given to uh fed players yeah, but that's, yep. you know what, that's a typical maneuver now with these, with every new lockbox, they try to balance things where what used to be exclusive is now equally shared, so, I mean, it, it, uh, I can understand it. Mav, uh, I think that uh, that one is not balanced, because Plasmonic Lead is the Uber console to have in the STO. No, uh, you're, mis you're misunderstanding what yeah. I'm saying. What I mean by balance is it's no longer exclusive to one faction. It's now available yeah, yeah, on yeah, an yeah. opposite faction. That's what I mean by balance. So instead yeah. of one faction now being uber leech with their plasmonic leech, now everybody's got it. So quit your, you know, quit your yitching. Yeah. But if you go on the STO forums, you'll see a couple of more than a couple of threads uh, on plasmonic leech crying that feds now have everything that KDF had before. Oh, no. Well, you know, what, you, know, you, you know what made me laugh, though, was the fact that, um, yeah, they're giving the emission-seeking torpedo to the KDF. How many Fed ships have cloaking devices that that's actually useful for? Uh, two. 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 The, the Galaxy the X and the Defying. Ah, uh, Galaxy X. And then, well, we got the Romulans now, so any Romulans that's out the Fed side. I well, no, aside, the, aside, right, no, aside from the Romulan stuff, but I just mean, really? You're now giving them a tailpipe torpedo? Why? Obviously, it's for, you know, for KDF to fight Fed Romulans, because everybody yeah. knows you can cloak now, so everybody's going to be running a Romulan with cloaking device. It could be also useful for KDF versus KDF. Yeah, that too. No, yeah. we don't have to stand still. Uh, and, I'll buy that, okay. 
Because uh, a Burrell can fire when cloaked, so it can just shoot one off and hopefully hit Ooh, somebody not on their nice. team. Yeah, and I'm just on top hitting. of that, on top of that, it's useful for anyone who's got a high enough stealth rating that their mask energy sign signature pretty much acts like a cloak. Yep, I'm okay, waiting see? for the event. Well, I'm guessing there's going to be an eventual screw up where that uh, tailpipe torpedo is going to target the person that launches it if they do use yeah. a cloaked Burrell. That'd be funny. All right, so then we've got the tachyon grenades, which Math mentioned, the psionic dampener, which is really for the Davidians and the species M113 or whatever, which that could be good if you're still grinding out your Romulan marks or whatever, because that does take quite a bit. And uh, Oh, we can't forget our, how do you say this? Kelidid companion pet? Non-combat, of course. Kaled. Kaled. Yeah, but uh, back to the psionic dampener, that also works against Remans as well, because they yep. also oh, nice. have yeah. a bit of a main attack. Also, so, yeah, you that's, forgot that's... to mention the special traits you now have in the logboxes. Oh yeah, don't oh, what forget, we got? every captain now has two traits, or they should have activated two traits, especially if you're a uh, Vice Admiral level. I'll flash on that you now have, you now have t the ability to activate two more traits. And I think they uh, gave also everybody you a get free a retreat respect, token. Uh, respect token for right. uh, respecting traits, one mm -hmm. for free. And yep. at, at the level cap you have eight traits now. And I've got yep, five yep. available slots for traits. Mm -hmm. yep. So why don't we go down the uh, the list here of people that showed up and let's just say what we think of this lockbox now that we kind of see what's all in it. Uh, so go ahead, Matt. Uh, uh, um, I'll say that, uh, and, and again, I'm being not a huge fan of lockboxes, I was more a fan of the temporal lockbox than I am this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with that too. My overall feeling as I look at this, I, I'm a fan of the Romans, but I'm not like an uber fan. I was more of a fan of like the Dominion lockbox, but my favorite was the uh, temporal one. Now, I, again, I'm not one who opens up lockboxes, and for it's a while there, the I really hated the lockbox. And then when I saw the temporal one, I was just like, oh, there's so much stuff in here I want that I actually did spend time opening up boxes. Uh, this one, I don't think I'm going to be buying keys to open it. If I, if anything, I'll get stuff off the exchange because I, I like the ships seeing here, and I'll be, it will be cool to team with people who have them. But I think I'm still going to go with the Mo guy. Murrow, what do you think? Oh, it's hit and miss with me. You got the usual fluff in there through the, the credit bonus pools, the XP bonus pools, but the, the lithium claim packages I really like because it's an easy source of the lithium for those who don't spend hours upon hours grinding out the various queues. And Ships, they're not that hard again, to get too, miss. huh? Uh, not for me. I've Compared to the other quite stuff. a few. I've been lucky. I've always been getting. When I've been getting them, I've always been getting the VIP ones, which come in packs of 10. Yeah. Hershey, what do you think? Well, uh, for me personally, this is the best logbox. I what was... do you like it? Well, the ships. Ships are uh, very good. Special consoles, excellent. Special trade. Companions. I think you're getting what I had with the, the temporal lockbox. I think the reason I really liked it, too, was just because there was a lot of stuff in there. Like, I didn't expect to get the ships, but other than that, there some of the, even the lower, yeah, the, yeah, the lower stuff, there was a lot yeah, to get. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. I never expected a Talshiar lockbox. I thought that uh, the next lockbox would be, for sure, a lot uh, or a silent mm -hmm. enemy. Ether, what do you is, think? Yeah. Uh, I'm not too sure what to think about the Kalshar lockbox. I thought it would be more like a mole recon lockbox, which is still Romulan themed. But I'm with Mav here in that I like the temporal lockbox more, because I was a fan of the face Tetrion ground weapons. And Mystic. I like... I'll say most of the stuff. The ships are cool. Yep. The consoles are good, because... They're going to eventually get to all of them. The Romulan mirror ships are good, but they're just recycling the older stuff into this lot box. Where... Oop. I think we lost him. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Uh, okay. uh, keyboard. Ah. Uh, so you were talking about recycling it. Yeah, a bunch of recycling of uh, older lot boxes into this new bo lot box with the fed mirror ships and the clayon mirror ship 
and then the dilithium mining and all the credit pools for all to mystic uh, i think uh, they are now setting a standard for future log boxes uh, which items they'll have in the future like that you just mentioned yeah but they could have took one of those recycled things out and put in a new uh weapon type that yeah, combines but, to, to yeah, more yeah but i don't think they had time Actually, Probably. funny funny you mention that because it's not just the Tao Shao box that they've come up, but with the Mar with also with the launch of the Romulan faction, they've actually gone back to two of the older boxes and put Mara Romulan ships into those as well. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Well since this was Romulan thing, they it could have been a chance to add a plasma weapon with another proc onto it. Yeah, that would be very nice. Yep. I'm surprised they don't have that in here already. <laughs> I think yep. it would have been nice to see something, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I understand how much of a pain in the ass these are, but it would have been nice to see something Thaleron thrown in there, in my opinion. Or that. That too. Especially I don't know it's not I'm noticing a real lack of Thaleron anything. Come on, these are the Romulans. They used it against us. Why can't uh, every player we use it against other players or them? I, 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 have, I kind of have a little problem. Yeah, that. it's Man. weird that stuff like that's missing from this. And I think that's why it kind of feels a little more empty than the other ones. Because, like, the Temporal one, everything there plus more, we got. Like, anything you'd expect in a Temporal lockbox seemed to be there plus more. And this one, it seems like stuff's missing, which is making it feel a little more empty. And now yep. let's also talk about the big thing that still is missing that should be available in this game. Nobody has seen the Scimitar in any aspect. Yeah, but that's what I wanted to say with, uh, oh, sorry. regarding taller weapons. Uh, I presume that they are going to uh, release new weapon type with the scimitar tolerant weapons. Like, it's like the uh, cannon ability. Yep, yep. Like so, they so. did with uh, uh, with Kumari, uh, Kumari vessel special phasers and something like that. All right. So you see that this is a possibility somewhere down the line, maybe before the next actual season, that they will add something new to include Thalerons in the Scimitar. Yeah, probably with the Scimitar pack. Yeah, we know uh, the Scimitar is coming because yep. everybody's been requesting it. So I see the Scimitar right. in a month. But here's the thing. Was was there actually more requests for something Narada-like versus the Scimitar? I, I don't know. I nope. didn't see anything about having a Narada class ship. I mean, I've seen, oh, can we get the Enterprise from the Moon movie in here? But, yeah. but the Scimitar's been a much big outcry for that because people have really wanted to fly that ship, including myself. I, I was like, ah, I'd check it out. There's people asking for the vengeance now from the newer movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it, right. So see, here's the thing. People are asking for stuff from a universe which is not authorized to be in this game that we know of. As far yeah, as they can only make ripoffs. That's why we don't see an exact copy of the Narada in here they were only able to make ships that look like it because they don't right. have the rights for the Narada. So, and i and i kind of like that at least these are kind of knockoff ships right they're getting creative and that's fine and I, and I understand that but again at this point that's all stuff that can't be in the game so they're making knockoffs why not put stuff that is available to the game that they do have licensing for and make it available like i could have seen instead of having that that super you know assault destroyer that's you know made out of uh, the Derrick that could have been the Narada. Yeah. I, maybe I, I, maybe I, I, they were I'm making some saying. of these type of ships for like when you take on Tal Shiar in the game. Now I haven't played I mean, any much the, of the Romulan content, but not, I assume you're taking on Tal Shiar. I said Narada, I meant to say uh, the Scimitar. But anyway. Yep. Yeah, well that's basically guys what's in the lockbox. So hey, why don't we go open some lockboxes? Are you guys ready with your keys? Yep. Well, so we're going to start opening boxes here. Uh, we're at my star base here with Jupiter Force and a bunch of the members. And I'll go ahead and start things off since uh, I'm the one who has to manage everything after this is all done here. And I'm the one probably with the lowest amount of keys in boxes. Oh, no, I got the same amount as you. <laughs> okay, so in this first box, Reinforcement Duty Officer Mini Pack and Four Lobby. Don't spend them all in one place. Yeah, I can't spend them all in one place. <laughs> Number two for me, another Reinforcement Duty Officer Mini Pack and seven Lobby. What the fuck? Another Reinforcement Duty Officer Mini Pack and four Lobby. I'm seeing a pattern here. Hmm. <laughs> Fleet Support Duty Officer Mini Pack and five Lobby. So you've gotten DOS in all these so far. <laughs> yep. Down to my last one. Special Weapon, excuse me, Special Equipment Pack Nanite Disruptor Weapons. 
Let me actually open that box and see what comes out of that. Nanite Disruptor, Dual Heavy Cannon, Mark 12, Accuracy, Critical Hit, and Damage. The proc on this is, let's see, uh, damage to target, 405.3 Disruptor damage, uh, 270.2 DPS, uh, negative 12 weapon power when firing. These are dual heavies. Uh, plus 2 critical chance, plus 10 critical severity, plus 10 accuracy. All right, really so how, how are you feeling? For me. How are you feeling after you open this 5 lock boxes? Do you feel you got your, quote, money's worth? Uh, if I'm hunting for ships, no. But, again, uh, am I a huge doffer as well? I used to be. I'm not really huge on that. So, did I, considering... It's only five boxes, five keys. Would I be discouraged thus far? No, probably not. But considering one weapon and nothing but DOFs, which don't do any, which really don't affect my gameplay whatsoever, yeah, a little upset at that. All right, who wants to go next? Twenty crystals, two thousand CXP bonus pill. Twenty crystals is pretty good. Well, Twenty crystals is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. That's not bad. Okay, second one, fleet support, uh, Dove pack, four crystals. Okay, console pack, uh, ionized gas sensor, plasmonic leech, and four crystals. Ooh, there's a winner Can I one. buy those? Excellent. Okay, special equipment pack, nanite disruptor weapons, four crystals. I'll, All right. I'll, I'll go back to the nanite pack when I've finished opening boxes. Yep. Okay. Another nanite disruptor pack, and five crystals. Fleet support, Dove pack, and five crystals. A nanite disruptor weapon pack and 15 crystals. So, so far his win is the 20 crystals and the console. Yep. Four crystals, 5,000 fleet credit bonus pill. Nanite disruptor weapon pack, five crystals. And the 10th box, Dove mini pack, four crystals. Now, I have four nanite disruptor weapon packs. Let's see what's in them. A Mark 11 nanite disruptor beam array with credit and damage times two. 11, wow, you kind of got a shaft that I got at least a Mark 12. Mark 12 dual beam bank, accuracy damage times 2. There we go. Mark 12 split beam rifle, crit D times 2 damage. Hmm. And Mark 12 beam ray, accuracy, critage, and damage. Now, quick question, are these bound to character, or are you going to be able to transfer them, say, to your Romulan if you want? Uh, this says bind, it says character bind on equip, so... Okay. These should be tradable or sellable as normal. Yep. How, many right, how, you, how are you get? I got the one thing I really want, which is the leech. Yeah. So for him, it was worth it. Yeah, he seemed to get a lot useful. of lobby out of it. So how are you feeling, Moro? Did you feel like you got a, a good deal out of that? Yeah, if I was we go on with the rest, I'm going to open up the other five boxes I've got. All right, let us know if you get anything good. All right, Hershey, Sorry. do you want to go next? Okay. Have you do, what, uh, the, what the shocker reinforcement duty officer pack and five lobby? <laughs> Another reinforcement officer duty pack and four lobby. I'm sensing a pattern here. Uh, five lobby and two thousand uh, CXP bonus pool. Okay. Another fleet support Jesus duty officer pack and ten lobby. Four lobby and five thousand fleet credits. Mirror Universe Assault Cruiser. Hey! Special requisition pack and for loop. Tal Shiar Command Code. What is that? Okay. And for lobby. Tal Shiar Command Codes? Yeah, what yep. is that? Uh, Let's see in the, the info. Unique, uh, the unique uh, DOF assignments. I've got five of them. Oh, like oh, two okay. ones? Uh, like, yeah. activate, uh, it's activate to assign crewmen to Tal Shiar ah. infiltration assignment. So. Okay, so like the old temporal missions. Yep. Got it. Okay. That that wasn't on a list anywhere. Nope. So, what a shocker, another reinforcement duty of Supek and five of them. Woo! Another reinforcement... <laughs> Jesus, officer pack and four lobby. I hope you do a lot. One, five lobby and five thousand crystal bonus pool. So, four uh, reinforcement duty officer packs, one fleet support duty officer pack, two fleet credit five thousand bonus pools, one mirror universe assault cruiser, and the Tal Shiar command code. All right, how are you feeling after you open those 10 boxes? Uh, terrible. I'm going terrible. to shoot myself out of the window. So I take it you do a lot of doffing. 
Yep, I did. I did before, but not now. So oh, right. I'm devastated. All right. Next sucker. Yes. I mean, next opener. Uh, um, now recording from Fraps and opening my boxes. This way, everyone can see what I'm getting and confirm <laughs> for themselves. Opening. Tells your command codes: five lobby, uh, fleet support duty officer pack, and seven lobby. Such an odd number, seven lobby. Okay. Ah, uh, special uh, special equipment pack, nanite disruptor weapons, and seven lobby, and a reinforcement mini pack and four lobby. That's all my keys. So, so how are you feeling after you open those four? Good, bad? Well, I was hoping for a console, but. The, uh, I can get something good for the, uh, dual heavy cannons. You'll get at least 40 million for them, if you get them up early enough. Yep. Uh, current chat coming across fleet chat, looks like 83 million is a going cost for the destroyer already. Nice. Alright, who's That's next? It seems pretty low compared to yeah, some somebody was just yep, saying that. Yep, very low. Alright, uh, Mystic, do you got something you want to open? Yes, yeah, so I, I can. I got 20 keys, or 30 keys, 20 boxes, but I can open 10. Okay. Yeah, we'll open 10, maybe I we'll am, do some more. I later. am doing this on my Ferengi, so he can manipulate the uh, the drop numbers of what I can get. He's got his little hacking device and stuff. Yeah, his, he's see. got his hacking device, and his feet can't even touch the ground in this chair. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Rom, let's go. First box, 5,000 fleet credits and 5 lobby. Second one is Tal Shiar command codes and 5 lobby. We got codes again, but 4 lobby. And we got another set of command codes. Looks like he's hacking the Tal Shiar computer system. And so another 5 there. lobby. And we got our first fleet support mini pack and 5 lobby. Reinforcements and 4 lobby. More reinforcements and seven lobby. Nanite disruptors and five lobby. Fleet support with five lobby. Five lobby and a VIP customer dilithium mining claim. Not bad. Oh, first one of those. And uh, since this Ferengi is only captain, I am going to save the nanite disruptors for later. Yeah, don't open. Yeah. All right, so how are you feeling, Mystic? Did you get anything good? Do you think it was worth the money? Uh, I, I no. guess the dilithium, you can get yeah. 5,000 dilithium with it. Uh, 50 lobby overall is pretty good. And this guy has no doff, so that helps out. But I was also looking for a console that I can send to one of my other characters. All right, or so put it seems on like exchange got... because you know the plasmonic leech will go high. Mm -hmm. It's four million now, according to our fleet mates in the chan uh, Jupiter Post channel. So it seems like we've gotten one that's kind of like eh, one that's kind of like yeah, and then the rest is kind of like meh. Nobody's gotten this ship yet. All right, we'll see if my luck changes. I'm gonna start opening them here now. All right, here we go. I've got a special equipment pack. Nanite disruptor weapons in four lobby. A lobby, ten lobby crystals, and a genetic resequencer ground trait conduit. Not bad. Yeah, that one's pretty nice. Nobody else has gotten those yet. Oh my god, the Telshiar adapted destroyer! No, I'm kidding. It's the Liar. special equipment pack, nanite disruptor weapons, and five lobby crystals. Uh... Another nanite disruptor weapon and five lobby crystals. And another now I just have to open in four lobby crystals. And I'll open these up and see what I got. So I got like four of those total. So basically every one of my boxes was one of those, except for the one with the trait. Alright, so we got dual disruptor beam mark eleven purples. A disruptor high density beam rifle, purple, mark eleven. A nanite disruptor turret, mark twelve, purple. And then finally a nanite disruptor beam array. Purple Mark 12. So, eh, the trait's gonna be nice. I'll have to see if I actually like that trait on this character or who I'll put it on. But the the weapons, eh, may be good on Romulan. We'll see. What was this trait? Uh, this one is the uh, Conduit. Genetic Resequencer Ground Trait Conduit. 
I don't see it in the description. What does it uh, actually add to what your does officer do? on the ground? See, I just used it, so... I got a retrain token out of that too. Alright, let me go into my traits and see what it does. So it says it's going to improve shield charges and power cells. That actually might make me start using uh, power cells again. I haven't used them in a while. Because you kill everything so fast back in the day when it took you forever to kill stuff. I really <laughs> yeah. use power cells. And the improved shield recharge is uh, nice because I do use the uh, the Mako armor where you get the, the free charge for you. So that might be a nice thing. To, I'll have to try it out if I got an extra spot available. But overall, I'm feeling kind of eh on it. I'm glad I only had five keys. All right, so we opened up some lock boxes, and uh, people are kind of all right with it. It doesn't seem like anybody got anything really decent out of it. A few people got a console or a little ship, but nothing big. Yeah, I opened up uh, quite a few more boxes of uh, make. I just got another 10 or so dove packs and four more weapons. All right, so it seems like definitely if you're doffing and you need some doffs, definitely good source is the lockbox if you got yep. keys already. But if you're not, like I'm not doffing, and it seems like a lot of us aren't doffing anymore, it, it, it's kind of eh when you get doffs. I think I think what they need to do is just more doff missions or do something to update doffs because it's kind of been like the same thing for over a year. Or yep, a when Heretic left, no new changes to the doff system. I, it's a nice little system. I, I stopped doing it when the uh, the chains, when I was finished with them all, because the chains yep, made me yep. really addicted to it. But once I was done, it was like, eh. Well, on my three characters, I finished all the DOF assignments and uh, maxed out the uh, DOF rate. So I used to play all the time on DOF market, but now nothing. All right, well, we've opened some lock boxes. Next up. I'm going to join with Mystic, and we're going to give you some easy tips into remembering what to do with your lockboxes when you get them. And welcome, everybody. Now, this is going to be the most important lesson you learn about lockboxes here, because it's going to tell you what you can do with your lockbox. So you're flying around, blowing ships up, and suddenly you see this big box in space, and you pick it up. What do you do with it? And you don't want to forget what to do with it. So here's some quick and easy tips to... Uh, to teach you what to do with your lockbox. Now, of course, everybody likes comparing things to things that are familiar. So we're going to compare lockboxes here to hookers because, strangely enough, both are very similar. So if you can remember these tips as I compare lockboxes to hookers, you should have no problem remembering what to do with your lockbox when you pick it up. First of all, you can stick it in both. Like a lockbox, you can stick your key in and you're good to go. Uh, I don't even think I have to explain with the hooker, so we'll move on to the next one. You can kick both of them straight to the curb, because in Star Trek Online, you have the nice little feature of discarding your lockbox and forgetting all about it. Then, third, you can sell them on the streets. Just like hookers will stand on the streets, lockboxes can be sold on the streets to your fellow players, too. Just go to the exchange, and you can put them up for whatever energy credit price you want. You might want to try to stick with the market price, but whatever. So those are the three tips there. So they're pretty... Oh, oh, what's that door noise? What? Hello? Murphy, Whoa, you are forgetting the, you? the most important feature. You Not only can you stick a key into both a lockbox and a hooker, but you never know what you will actually receive in return. It could be something good, or it could be something horribly bad lockbox std hey. <laughs> and every time you open one you take the risk of rage quitting this game damn so you safety guys when you open up your lockboxes and we'll catch you later on but i guess next we'll go into our next segment so hopefully now you'll remember are you the key master and welcome to the ship spec segment. This part of the podcast is essentially describing the different stats of any new ships that come to the lockbox and comparing them to already existing ships. In this segment, we'll be comparing the Talshia Adapted Destroyer and the Talshia Adapted Battlecruiser to their appropriate counterparts from what is now all three factions, the Feds, the Clinks, and the Romulans. Well, let's start off with the main lockbox ship, shall we? The Talshia Adapted Destroyer. 
it's essentially based off the Dylan Warbird. So, if you guys didn't realize already, Dylan Warbird was already a science-based warbird by the end of Tribble. So that's why it ha it's a bit science-heavy. Uh, with being an uh, adaptive ship, it has obviously a few different perks and more advancements compared to the Dylan Warbird. But essentially, what the gist of it, this one is, it comes with a shrapnel torpedo. And the way it looks, it's essentially a mini Narada <laughs> from the 09 movie. So what you have is a mini Narada with two great big elongated bog deflector parts spewing out like three kilometers in front of the ship. And even a little torpedo launcher which fires its own missiles. This torpedo launcher, by the way, comes on Harkiv's ship if you ever find his ship at some point during the Romulan story. So I, th I think the player has its own missile one as well. I'm not entirely sure about that, but when you launch the torpedoes, kind of expect the missiles coming from the torpedoes themselves. That's what happened in the movie, and I think this is what happened in the game as well. Those are extremely powerful torpedoes, by the way, and they can be put on both adapted destroyers. So expect to be rather decimated by them if you ever find them in either PvE or PvP depending on which is your preference. Well, let's go into the ship itself, shall we? First things first, unlike other Romulan ships, because this is an adapted ship, this doesn't use a singularity core. Therefore, it uses its own special Borg adapted warp core because of the new warp core enhancements and um, additions for Legacy of Romulus. So that's already different. So don't expect any singularity powers on that. That's going to remain unique to the Romulans. Another thing is that it doesn't use a battle clock like Romulan ships and several Klingon ships. It uses an adapted clocking device, what is essentially a standard clocking device just for the ship. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between this and a normal one, but I would expect it either negligible or extremely minor. So don't expect anything there. And I wouldn't count on any stealth additions either, so you probably won't be better off with this adapted claw compared to others. But let's take a comparison to some of the other ships you can have for the adapted destroyer and compare them. Now I personally compare this to the Delon Warbird because it's based off that. The fleet Prometheus because that's also science based escort and the Breen ship in a similar position. Now in comparison to the Delon Warbird, the fleet Delon Warbird retrofit because the Tashi Adapted Destroyer, of course, is fleet level. This has more hull, more shield modifier, more crew, more versatility, and whilst it loses a tactical console slot for an engineering one, it does have an additional device slot with a lower turn rate and better power levels. So basically what this means is it's most of the time it's upgraded, but there are several little points which you probably go over for the Delon rather than this one. For example, the turn rate and the five tactical consoles on the standard uh, fleet Delen. That's a 523 for TAC Engine Psi console layout. The adapted destroyer is a 433 biased towards tactical. So with a turn rate of 11. So you're not going to be facing as much. It's got the same turn rate as the fleet deep space science vessel. So it's pretty low. About the same turn rate as a battle cruiser, a standard Klingon battle cruiser. So you're not going to be turning as much, which means cannons on the ship, unless you're really good at handling a battle cruiser with cannons or a Vesta, for example, then you're not really going to find it very useful on the ship. I'd, I'd probably say. The clocking device kind of makes it up, but in, cap in comparison to the fleet that lends battle cloak, not very useful, I'd say. And you kind of use it in combat like the Romulan ships. So. It, it depends on your preference. Overall, I'd say the Adap Adapted Destroyer has the most base hull of any escort or tactical ship in this game. Not counting the Fleet Dreadnought. That's I'm going to technically count it as a carrier. The, the Talshia Adapted, Adapted Destroyer with a base hull of 39k is the same as a standard VA Sea Store cruiser, fairy cruiser, like like the and the Sovereign or the, the original Galaxy before it was upgraded to 40k, that sort of thing. So it's extremely high 
and extremely survivable base for a tactical ship. But it does lose its tactical abilities and skews them out to more versatile other things. So you, you'd probably go for a more sciencey or engineering bias on this. So don't expect that much DPS compared to other ships coming from this, say, in comparison to, say, the Fleet Delen. In comparison to the Fleet Prometheus, the Prometheus has, again, it's in a similar position to the Delen. Even the consoles are, are traded off at the same turn rate, and of course the, the Prometheus has plus 15 power weapons. And as well as multi-vector assault mode. But generally the adaptive destroyer does beat it, except for the turn rate, and maybe the consoles if you want to leave that out. I know many people complain about the Prometheus, I've seen quite a few players enjoy it. Um, especially when they go NVAM, they have the turn rate of a bird of prey, and then just keep on going. But essentially, overall, I'd, I'd actually probably go with the destroyer, despite the lower turn rate. I mean, if you can handle cannons on that ship, like if you're a good battlecruiser player on the Klingon side, or, or, or a good Vesta player, then you might be able to get away with it. Granted, you'll probably lose a few tactical essential abilities compared to the Delano Fleet Prometheus. But generally, the, the Adapted Destroyer is just generally better. And that's something kind of expected on a lockbox ship, to be honest. L well, let's compare it to another lockbox ship, shall we? The Breen Chelgret. Now, the Adapted Destroyer has more hull, 3000 base more hull, and a shear modifier of 1.1, where the Breen ship has 1.0 but loses a weapon slot compared to the brain ship. The brain ship is the only tactical orientated sort of escorty ship in the game with four aft weapon slots. So it's that kind of a thing which kind of makes it u unique and that sort of thing but in comparison to this adapted destroyer it's in a similar position, it's got a higher turn rate but generally it's less survivable than it and it's not got as many power mod modulations and the console is regarded as pretty useless I've seen. So that kind of a thing makes the brain ship, it's a good all round cruiser, that's why it's called a warship essentially, it's, it's got science rotation, it's a tactical ship and it's got plenty of engineering bias towards it as well. But compared to the adapted destroyer I'd probably say that the brain ship won't be on the same level. I'd say the Adaptive Destroyer would be slightly better in terms of survivability, despite losing turn on it, and it has a lot more survivability and versatility than the Brain Ship. So out of those four, I'd probably go with the Adaptive Destroyer still. It depends on your preference, if you want the higher turn rate, and if you want the fifth tactical console for the Fleet Delane and Fleet Advanced Escort. But, overall, like I said, the Adaptive Destroyer does have many perks to it, a lot more major ups and cons, but again, that also depends on how major you classify turn rate and a fifth stack of the console. But let's have a look at the battlecruiser, shall we? The battlecruiser is based off the Dideri decks. So we'll be directly comparing this with the fleet Dideri decks. You can compare it with maybe the falling carrier, the Odyssey, Science Cruiser and the Bortask, but I'll just be comparing this to the fleet Dideri decks since that's literally what it's based off. Now the first thing to know is the BOF layout. The fleet Dideri decks in like the last one or two weeks before Legacy of Romulus launched got an upgrade to its boss slots. What I would least consider it. It's got a Commander Engineering, a Lieutenant Commander Science, a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, and an Ensign Tactical with an Ensign Universal. Now that's extremely that's extremely good. The only there are only other like two or three ships that we've seen with that kind of a uh, boss layout, and that's the Tholian ships, the Recluse and the Orb Weaver. The Dideri decks is like that because of player feedback and the Battlecruiser I was actually rather surprised that it wasn't like that but considering its other perks it kind of really doesn't need it. I mean the console out for example is the same. It's got a higher base turn rate. It's the same as the, the Sovereign so you'll be expecting to turn a bit like a Sovereign and because it's so big especially with the Borg parts added to it you, it will feel a lot bigger than the Dideri decks. You'll be noticing more turner, but it's literally the same as a sovereign. But the other unique thing this has goes in comparison with the recluse carrier, which is the commander universal slot. Now, this is 
probably one of the best universal slots you can have. Only a Bird of Prey and a Riku's Carrier have this type of slot. And on this ship, it's it is extremely essential because it means you can turn the ship into basically anything you want. If you put science in there, you can easily turn it into a bit like a science ship with a with a low turn rate and extreme survivability. Hence the shield modifier of 1.3, which by the way is the highest base shield modifier of any cruiser in the game, or cruiser oriented ship. And a base hull of 42k, same as the Odyssey, or the Boar Task. But this battle cruiser generally is more versatile at commander level, but not as well laid out at lieutenant commander level. You're not going to have as many high level abilities on the battle cruiser as you can for the Dideri decks, because of course you can't change it in the middle of combat. You can only change it out of combat. And with this having a normal cloak, you'll be finding yourself trying to essentially find it in the middle of the battle if you want to adapt to a situation. And what I mean by that is, obviously you're going to find a setup that you preferably like, but if you end up in a situation where you want to experiment with boss slots compared to an enemy that you can't defeat, so like a bunch of Alachi ships, just, just for the sake of an example, then this kind of a thing would be highly beneficial to have several setups for the Commander Universal, a bit like the Recruits Carrier, and test them. I'd probably say the Commander Universal is probably better on the ship than the Recruits Carrier, simply because the Recruits doesn't do any DPS. I mean, two tactical consoles and barely any tactical orientation to it, especially with three, three, four and a half weapon slots, you're not going to do DPS in that thing. But the Battle Cruiser, the Adapted Battle Cruiser, you probably are. So, you can fight as a science, maybe, if you want to put up a low turn rate. Like, a bit like the tactical as well. And engineering, you can have a lot of survivability there as well. You can find a lot more survivability, I'd say, in the Battle Cruiser than a lot of other ships. But the downside to it, of course, is compared to most of the cruisers would probably be the Lieutenant Commander Science instead of Lieutenant Commander Engineering. So if you want to put an engineer in that universal, you you can easily do that with a Lieutenant Commander Science, but you're not going to find as many useful survivability tips as you would on an engineer because of course science is not only healing but it's debuffing as well. Whereas engineering is more heavily biased towards survivability. Overall, I'd probably say the battle cruiser is generally it has a lot of perks compared to the Dideri decks. But the Dideri X has its own perks against the Battle Cruiser, the Adapted Battle Cruiser. So essentially what I'm saying is, both are as good as each other in their own way. I'd probably say neither is better than the other overall. Just one has better things than the other, whilst the other has another better thing than the other one. If that makes any sense. But yeah. Mirror Universe ships, they're just, ad just adjustments there. So generally, this lockbox doesn't have as many ships as you have seen in, uh, in other lockboxes. I mean, no shuttle, for example. We didn't have another shuttle in the Dominion lockbox. The last shuttle we had from a lockbox ship was the Temporal lockbox with the Aeon and the Roshenko. So you won't be flying an adapted little shuttle or anything. So generally, the stats on the ship, I'd probably say mediocre compared to other ships I've seen in the past, especially the Bark. Like, when the bug came out, it was like this godly ship, and it's still considered like a godly escort, because of what it's capable of. Turn rate of a better prey and survivability of a defiant or a patrol escort. Whereas the Tal Shiar ships, generally they have, more, they have more perks than other ships, but they have a few downsides, which it can be considered quite major downsides compared to other ships, like the turn rate on both of them are no more than 11. The Adapted Destroyer is 11, which is the lowest base turn rate of any escort or tactical ship in the game, not counting the Dreadnought. And the Battle Cruiser is the same turn rate as a, a Sovereign, which is pretty good for its size. But, again, the pros and cons between that and the Dideridex can be quite debatable. Both of them, compared to other standard Klingon or Federation cruisers, is up to you. But generally, I'd say these two Warbirds would probably be generally better than most other ones, simply because of its ability to increase in high level powers. But that's just me. It's up to a, it's up to the player to see if they can control the ships. I know I know for example I like the fleet talk up battle cruiser retrofit for the Clown side, but the fleet to dairy decks warbird battle cruiser and I'm really looking forward to flying as well. 
The adapted power cruiser, however, I'm not so interested in the flying, simply because of its downsides compared to the Derridex and the Torcat. So, to wrap up the segment, overall, I'd say the stats on these ships were pretty mediocre compared to other ships. They're good. Some high level up upgrades, especially like shield modifiers on Vesol and maybe a t boff layout as well. But some other major downsides to it, such as cloaks or base turn rate, maybe console layout as well, would ca kind of classify it as a different opinion for many ships. So what I'm saying overall is, have a look at these ships. If, if you don't like the stats of them, don't fly it. And if you really like the ship, fly it and you find that you really didn't like it, well, try to compare it to other ships that you fly. Like if you're a Romulan, try this and compare it to the Dodori deck, see which one you like and fly it. There's no abs I'm not saying like, try this, it's the absolute best. I'm saying it's a preference for every player. Try which one you like, have a go. If you do like it, fine. If you don't, that's fine. We're not, <laughs> we're not like forcing you to say this is the best, absolute most epic thing in the game. Just have a go. Now our math segment that was supposed to be done by Burrell and Alt here is being pushed off and will be released as, uh, let's say, a supplemental. They're going to need a little more time to throw that together, but basically the stuff they're going to be covering there, like um, how to make money off of lock boxes on the exchange, whether it's through keys, boxes, the items in them, that type of stuff. And then Alt had a few other topics he wanted to talk about. That's going to be pushed off. Uh, the supplemental part, which will include that segment, will probably be released hopefully in a few weeks here. But you can stay tuned for that. So on to feedback. Hello, and welcome to the segment of the show we will call Just Plain Feedback. We'll be covering some mess, uh, mail sent to us and, probably, and discuss suggestions sent by our own fleet mates. Or anybody. All you have to do is send us email at lockboxfiles at gmail.com. If it could be comments on lockboxes, suggestions for lockboxes, opinions on a lockbox, whatever. So you can send us your opinions for the Tal Shiaw lockbox there and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, first of all, here's what Chunter has to say. Uh, he would like an option to change lockbox colors. What do you guys think? Nothing says fancy like a neon green lockbox. Yeah, pulsating uh, purple. Yeah, I think he'd rather go for a pink one. Yep, or pink one. That's that's the color I was looking for. Pink for Santa. Real men wear pink. I'm thinking disco ball style. Disco ball style. Hey, Tanar, I know you were talking about uh, the you were designing the Taushiar lockbox before oh, we knew what it was going to look what? like. One of our fleet mates just bought, uh, get, got the Tavshiar adapted battle cruiser. Ooh, Ooh rage at Mad Dog zero 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 zero. So I if you really you want that, dog. I guess you can PM. So yeah, the character creator. Mad dog. So yeah, Tanar, you were designing the Tavshiar lockbox. I'll I'll try to flash a screenshot up over here about it. But uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your design here? Well. Actually, we ran into some issues. Apparently, there were some logistics that we kind of went around. And it caught up to us. So, Ooh. unfortunately, we are not allowed and not authorized by the Tashiar to actually show a picture of what that lockbox is going to look like. Uh, I apologize. I tried to cut some red tape before the show. Try to get it out there as fast as I could. But, unfortunately... I it sorry. Damn. Yeah, my bad. It hurts. It does. A couple another one we got here from another uh I think it's Chunter. Yeah, it's still him. Uh emo picking up a key to open a lock box. So like when you go to open your lock box, your character will like pull out a key from his pocket, stick it in the lock box, just like we talked to you guys about in our quick and easy tips for uh, opening lock boxes and stuff like that. And then you get an emote when you open it. What do you guys think? Worth I actually worth perfect like time? That. Uh, I, I like actually that like idea. that. I think it's a great idea. Yep. Yeah, same. I love that. I think it, it deserves a lot of man resources and hours. You know what? Maybe six months to get that one thing out, and we'll call it uh, Season 8, <laughs> Return of the Lockbox, or something like that. <laughs> uh, Ethier, it looks like you sent in some stuff. Do you want to go through it? Yeah, why not? Let me bring up our document again. Oh, there it is. I wanted to be able to take and shoot my lockboxes at enemies as if I would a torpedo. 
And I wanted to be have an ab wanted to have an ability where I could just pick the dang lock. I know it's the 25th century. We can't just break into these lock boxes. We had to get keys. What's up with that? It's, it's, it's weird. Pretty weird. But cryptics is uh, I think you should adamant be to... that we need uh, keys. I think you should be able to break the lock boxes, but you have a high probability that of losing in breaking it? it, you're going to lose it. Right. So I say maybe one out of a hundred, you're successful in opening it for free. You know, I, I think that would be an interesting mechanic. That'd be funny too. That would be. I would like that idea. You break it open. Yeah. And you, if you break it open, and if it, if you fail to open it successfully, it tells you what was in there when it was broken. Just so you have the insult to injury. Uh, this, call you know, an anti <laughs> we'll call it an anti-tampering device. If you trip it, the box explodes, and you get Boom. to see the wreckage of whatever was inside. You yeah, know, you if have, I was you have failed to open this box, however, you realized after investigation the contents of this box was an insert graphic here. I would, I, if I was the dev making that feature, I'd just, I'd just dig around with everybody and put in, it was the ship in that box, so every time you, you lost it, it'd be like, oh, you lost this ship. Whatever oh, that would be was. funny. If, that <laughs> would be funny <laughs> if the box the ship was in was also destroyed, it would release, release the ship full size, and you just, like, insta-kill. Oh, you have just lost your Tholian Orb Reaver that you would have got if you paid for the key. Oh. That would, that would hurt people's spirits so much. Ooh, the intro video for Legacy of Romulus actually in the game was neat. Nice. I, I, if, if, I had, if I had a character slot available, like if I got one for free, I'd be making my Rami right now. I just got mine. Another cryptic finest hour. Yeah, Kill definitely. <laughs> Kill us tell, tell us how you slot. really feel, Hershey. I feel... There's no words to describe that. No words. No words. That you heard it here first. That is how Hershey feels right now about Legacy Romulus. But and you know what? Right here at this point, Alt's not around right now. Alt exists. Who's like our going to be our economy guy? But uh, he had a link here about the, these truths as lock boxes and are they still true one year later? Uh, I think I might save that for uh, if I can find him later and he'll discuss that with us. Because it's a lot of reading, but I do remember seeing this a while ago about the truths about lockboxes and stuff like that. So I'm going to hold off on that until I can catch him later. But that's all our feedback. Remember, lockboxfiles at gmail.com. That's where you can find the uh, find our email and send us feedback. But uh, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, a lot of us, actually all of us right now are in Jupiter Force, so definitely go check out Stoked Radio by Mav. He's over here somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. There you are. Hey, Mav, how are you doing? Oh, okay. You just just finished channel. rolling my for character, and I'm loading her up with all the legacy unlocks that I have that are available for, the, for you know, my captains. Uh, so this way I've got a bunch of stuff right off the hit. I feel I feel like I'll have to delete a Cleon character in order to make my wrong. Because, so you, you know, yeah. it's a Cleon. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and then Foundry Files, check it out. That's where the inspiration for this show came, episode one. I hope you all realize that. So it's changing lives. But anyway, uh, episode two, if we were unable to fit the uh, math segment, if you haven't heard it in this episode and I didn't leave a, a memo, if we were unable to fit that in, that will probably be episode two, which will come out in between lockboxes. Uh, but if not, if we got everything in this episode that uh, is pertaining to lockboxes currently... We will catch you guys in episode two when the next lockbox comes out. So we'll see you then. Wave bye. See you guys. Bye. See you. I'm bye. waving bye. You can't see it, but I'm waving. Oh, oh right. This is audio. You can't see it. Damn. Well, we can use our imaginations. There we go. That's right. TR1.